The Discovery, Chapter 14, Part 3 Well, like I said, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not completely sure. Dr. Winnie admitted. Well, where's the nearby psychologist then? Midnight asked impatiently. It's heart-swarming eve, Midnight. The local psychologist is with his family in Las Pegasus. Finding one in Canterlot will be difficult until at least two days from now. Regrettably, the castle isn't staffed with psychologists at the moment. Celestia admitted. Well, we have to do something! We can't just sit here and wait for a psychologist to just show up! Midnight demanded. I understand your frustrations, and I'll be the first to admit that my theory is just that. A theory. However, if I'm right, then the only way I can think of helping him would be to just talk to him about it. If you can help him realize that it wasn't his fault, then maybe that will prevent this from happening again in the future. Dr. Winnie said, in an effort to comfort Midnight. But what if it is magic then? We just hope that he gets better somehow? Midnight asked, her brow furrowed in irritation. Celestia spoke next, her voice calm and collected. Midnight, please calm down. Regardless of which one is the cause, I don't believe we can provide a diagnosis until David awakes anyways. Um, Princess, I think I might have an idea. Twilight's meek voice chimed in. Of course, Twilight. Celestia responded. Well, it has to do with that spell you asked me to research a few days ago. The Transfiguration spell. Just as a hypothetical, it might be a viable option if magic is the cause. Twilight said, painfully aware of Midnight's questioning gaze. Uh, I don't think I follow Twilight. Celestia said after much consideration. Wait, what transfiguration spell? Midnight asked. It's a spell that could turn any other species into a pony. Star Swirl the Bearded came up with a spell over a millennia ago to defeat large monsters without having to use conventional magic or risk damaging the- Twilight began to explain. However, Midnight did a double take at Twilight's words. I'm, I'm sorry, what, what? You want to turn him into a pony? With magic? When we don't even know if that's what's hurt him yet? Are you trying to kill him? Midnight chastised, anger clawing its way into her voice again. No, of course not, Midnight. The only reason I bring it up is to give us more options. If magic damages his human biology, then turning him into a pony could prevent that from happening. I can't know for sure, not yet at least, but if I'm right, and equestrian magic is causing his pain, then there's no way he could continue to live here without being a pony. If I'm right, it would be cruel for him to stay here as a human. I know that it has risks, but if our magic is the cause, then it might be the only thing that we can do for him. Twilight countered. There's no way he would agree to that. He can't just give up what he is on the assumption that you might be right. Midnight retorted. If he has a breakdown this intense again, he might not be the one to make that choice. Celestia said, drawing the attention of every pony in the room. What do you mean? You're not seriously considering this, are you? Midnight asked, exasperated. Don't worry, Midnight. We won't be changing David's species tonight. That's a permanent solution to a potential temporary problem and will only be used as an absolute last resort. Not to mention, we still don't even have a proper diagnosis. We will try to diagnose the problem accurately first, and if the problem is in fact that his biology cannot handle equestrian magic, then, and only then, we will consult him on making that change. That said, if something like this were to happen again in the unforeseen future, it might become impossible to ask for his consent with regard to using the spell. I'm afraid that decision will have to fall on you, Midnight. Celestia said, drawing everyone's eyes to Midnight. What? Me? I can't make that decision for him, that's not my choice to make! Midnight reasoned, her tone growing more frantic. Midnight, please calm down, I understand that it's a massive responsibility, but you are the one David trusts the most. If any pony could make that decision for him, it'd be you. Celestia said, trying to calm the nearly hyperventilating mare in front of her. Before Midnight could formulate a response, a navy blue wing was draped over her. She turned her head to see Luna giving her a comforting smile. 
After a few moments, she sighed heavily and hung her head low. I understand your fears, Midnight's. Please try to remember that this is all very hypothetical at the moment. If our magic is the cause for what happened here tonight, and Twilight Spell can help him, then the decision will only fall on you if David absolutely cannot make that choice himself. We are going to try everything we can to help him before it comes to that. Luna said, warmth emanating from her voice. But I can't make that choice for him. It's not fair to David. Midnight pleaded. Midnight, you are the most important pony in David's life. Do you think he trusts anyone else with that responsibility? I... I'll think about it. Midnight said, her voice barely a whisper. Let's just pray that it doesn't come to that. If it's just a psyche causing this, then neither of you will have to make that choice. Dr. Winnie chimed in. Regardless, we're not going to make any decisions tonight. We'll have to tackle this once David is awake again. Celestia declared. We might not be able to make any decisions tonight, but I do believe I might be able to at least rule out one of those potential causes, sister. Luna spoke up, and all eyes fell on her. Ever since David arrived, I've struggled to see his dreams. Now that we've discussed his mental state and memories, I've realized something. Without getting too into the details, I might be able to access David's mind through his dreams and discern the true cause of his pain from there. How? Celestia asked, clearly intrigued. Like I said, I do not wish to get too into the details since it's very complicated, but the idea is that if I can enter a subconscious, I should be able to visually see if there is any equestrian magic from there. If there is, and it is the source of David's pain, then there should be severe damage surrounding it. Luna explained. What do you mean, what kind of damage? Midnight asked. Well, it's difficult to explain, but essentially, the dreamer's subconscious creates a metaphorical world around them when they dream. I enter this metaphorical world, and usually it mimics the real world. The only difference is what certain things represent. A simple road in one pony's dream could actually be a key neurological pathway in his or her mind. But they subconsciously correlate the two without knowing it. The damage would be exactly like the real world. A burned down house, a broken wheel, or even a bent pole. I should be able to find a magical residue that exists near the damaged parts of his subconscious mind. That's how I'll be able to discern actual damage from normal parts of the dream. If I find nothing, then we'll know that magic does not harm him. Luna answered. I'm not sure. Doesn't that sound a little... invasive, sister? Celestia asked. I'm afraid it is. I would never do this to some pony without their consent, but unfortunately, David cannot consent at the moment. Therefore, it falls to you, Midnight. Would you be alright with me doing this? Luna asked, her eyes intensely trained on Midnight's. Princess, if there's anything you could do, please do it. I can't see him in pain like that again. Not again. Midnight sadly trailed off. Very well, I will begin at once. This might take several hours, and it is already late. You all might want to rest soon. Don't stay awake on my account. Luna addressed every pony in the room. I'm not going anywhere. Midnight said, her mind having been made up long ago. I will stay as well, Princess Celestia said firmly. I'd like to stay, if it would be alright with you, Midnight. Twilight came forward as well. Midnight took a moment to respond. Of course, Princess, you're David's friend too. I know you didn't mean to hurt him. Midnight said with a weak smile. Thank you. I'll do anything I can to help. Twilight responded, perking back up slightly. Twilight Velvet and Nightlight shared a quick glance before looking back at David's sleeping form. I, I think, think we, we should, should stay, stay too. They both said in unison. David's a fine stallion, and I think we'd like to make sure that he's alright. Twilight Velvet finished for them. I'll stay too. Sunburst is taking care of Flurry Heart just a few rooms over, so we shouldn't have anything to worry about. Caden said. Same here. Shining Armor followed. Midnight took a moment to look at each of the ponies filling the room. Her eyes fell on each pony slowly, and before she even made it halfway around the room, tears were blurring her vision. You all want to stay? 
Midnight managed to say. Even though it's heartstorming Eve? Our whole family's here anyways. Besides, it's David's first hearth swarming. Let's make it special. Nightlight responded. Midnight held the tears back as best as she could. But despite her efforts, several tears streamed down her face and dampened the fur on her cheeks. She looked down and away from the group and wiped the tears away with her foreleg. Thank you. Thank you all so much. She spoke, her voice barely a whisper. Celestia's brilliant white wing found its way around Midnight's wither and pulled her close. Midnight looked up to see Celestia's magenta orb smiling down on her. I promise you that David will be alright, Midnight. You have my word. Celestia spoke, her voice full of kindness and compassion. Midnight slowly nodded her head, and after another comforting squeeze from Celestia's wing, Midnight was released from her grasp. Princess Celestia requested several mattresses to be brought to the room for the excess guests that would be staying over through the night. Within half an hour, the castle servants provided four queen-sized mattresses for the princesses and several twin-sized mattresses for the rest of the Sparkle family at midnight. Regardless of the many comfortable mattresses in the room, every pony tried their hardest to stay awake while Luna worked. The Sparkle family found some board games and a deck of playing cards to pass the time. After several hours, Nightlight proved his skill by beating even Celestia in a game of Go Fish. Shining Armor and Cadence cuddled on their respective mattress and watched as Twilight Velvet proceeded to destroy her husband's perfect win streak. They shared a laugh at his expense before Cadence had to stifle on. The hours passed quickly for some, but so, so painfully slowly for one pony in the room. Despite all of the general atmosphere of the room being somewhat jovial, one pony sat in silence her eyes glued to the only human being in the room. Midnight sat on her haunches only a foot away from David. Every time he moved in his sleep or his eyelids twitched just enough, she rose to her hooves to make sure he was okay. Eventually, every pony's energy fizzled out and died, and they prepared for bed, fully intending to see a healthy human in the morning. Celestia ensured every pony had blankets or other necessities before her ever-watchful gaze fell on Midnight. Midnight checked David for what must have been the hundredth time. As she watched her, the Sparkle family said their goodnights to each other and went to bed. Cadence and Shining Armor had long since fallen asleep, holding each other in their forelegs. A sad sigh forced itself out of her lips, and Celestia walked over to the Dark Unicorn. Midnight, I know you want to make sure he is alright, but there's nothing you can do right now. It's already one in the morning. Please, get some rest. Luna will ensure David is alright for the rest of the night. Celestia tiredly said. You go ahead, princess. I want to be awake when he wakes up. Midnight replied absentmindedly. Midnight! Celestia began, but was interrupted. Princess, please. I can't help him. I know that. I just... I, I just... have to do something. If I lose the night's worth of sleep at the cost of making sure he's okay, then I'd say it was a night well spent. Midnight said. A small smile forced its way on a Celestia's lips. You're in love with him, aren't you? She asked. I... yes. Midnight said, her eyes staying trained on David. He's lucky to have you. I will be just across the room if you need anything. Good night, Midnight. Celestia warmly said. Good night, princess. And thank you. Midnight replied. The soft and steady breathing of the many bodies in the room filled the air as the last of the ponies fell asleep. Even Midnight, despite her efforts, drifted off eventually and fell asleep on the floor, her hoof just barely making contact with David's hand as it hung off the couch. The only source of light that filled the room was the brilliant light from Luna's horn as she worked in the dreamscape. A dreamscape that was far less peaceful than that quiet room. Oh, the suspense. Don't you just love it? Anyways, let's get on to our magical donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Saru Orion, Iron Sky, and Jesse Smith. Magivic 109, Jock TF, Darkside Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Our Past, All Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother, Mortar, Dami Crown, Light, Red Rune, Scythe, 52, Will Chris, Twinkie, Ride, Soul, Shadow, Moon, Luigi, D8, Chance Across, Big Smoke, 369, Bobcat, GGF, Murder Princess, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and love life to the fullest.